Joining us now is former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Um, so, Dan, why would investigators allow Jesus Campos, who again was the sole eyewitness that we know of, to the shooting from within the building, to leave the country shortly after while the investigation is still going on? I'm baffled by that. It's very strange, Tucker. I mean, think about it. There's really no guarantee he's ever going to return. He's not under arrest. Um, he, he's not under any court order to stay in the country. I mean, they're limited legally what they can do to order him to stay, but it's just confusing. I mean, even I was thinking about this before we went on this segment here, and I'm thinking even the most innocent of explanations, right? I mean, he's a witness and a victim of one of the most horrific crimes in American history, obviously incredibly psychologically traumatizing. An innocent explanation, maybe he has family down there he's visiting, he needed some time. Um, but to go to Mexico right after the crime when you are the sole eyewitness to the potentially the crime of the century, and as you brought up in the segment, you have a, a pretty significant injury, a 5.56 five, or 223 round to the leg is really beyond perplexing. There's, there's yes. no convenient explanation for it. Well, I don't think it's possible. I don't think if you were hit with that round in, squarely in your leg, you'd be going anywhere because it would have destroyed your leg. But I, look, I, I'm not, I don't mean to impugn the character of, of Jesus Campos. I don't know anything about the man. I felt sorry for him. I still do. He was injured. True. But the behavior of the people around him is so weird and weird in a specific way. They're trying to control access to him. They're trying to control the story about him. They're clamping down on information about him and his actions, why would they be doing that? Is it MGM doing that? What is going on? Yeah, no, and I'm with you. I'm, I'm not, and neither am I. I'm, I'm certainly not trying to impugn his character either. I mean, this guy was, was a victim of this crime as well. It, but the, 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 look, that doesn't make the questions go away. The, the, the only explanation I can think of from the beginning, the genesis of all this, uh, you know, this kind of this fugue state we're in right now with this, because we had more answers about San Bernardino and Orlando in 24 hours than we have yes. had in this case in weeks is that there has to be some kind of friction between the parent company of Mandalay due to the potential for mass lawsuits and the Bureau, the FBI that's investigating this. There's no other convenient explanation. That explains a lot of the timeline discrepancies. Yes. That also explains, as you just said, and you're correct, I think this limited and controlled access to compost and a reason why the parent company may not have had a problem with him leaving to leave the country but, for a and, couple and days. They may have facilitated it, abetted it. I mean, I, that would not shock me at all. But it doesn't explain the behavior of, for example, the Clark County Sheriff. Our producer, Charlie Cougar, called over there today to ask a simple question about licensing. This guy doesn't seem to have had a license as a security guard. You know, whatever. What, what are the rules? Yeah. And they were so defensive and they yelled at him and hung up. Yeah. It, the spokesmen don't typically act that way when they're asked a simple question. What is that about? Yeah, well, especially from a major media outlet. I mean, it's not like you were calling from a local blog. I mean, this is a credible media outlet that reports on stories like this all the time. And, Tucker, we have to remember, you know, this is, I, I get it. I, we all respect law enforcement's role in this. We understand. But this was a crime perpetrated on the American people. People are justifiably concerned right. about why it happened, and we have no answers. You have to expect there's going to be profound media interest in this. And, yeah, answering like that doesn't help. Right. I mean, I respect law enforcement, but if you want respect, behave in a way that earns it. Really quickly, yep. this guy, it's not implausible he came paddock to the attention of federal authorities. Gambling winnings, I think, are reported over a certain number. He was churning a lot of money through the casinos. Is, no one's asked exactly, was he, uh, had he come to the attention of federal authorities? I know he hadn't been arrested, but do you think that's plausible that they knew who he was? Um, yeah, I mean, to, if, if, once you deposit $10,000 or more, you have to fill out a currency transaction report right. at a bank. He may have had suspicious activity reports in banks as well. I, I don't think this guy was a ghost to the federal law enforcement system. I, I think as information that. comes out, you're going to see more about that. I agree with that, and I think there's some butt covering going on, just to guess. Dan, thank you. Yes, sir.